Hi, my name is Jacqueline Paul, and I'm the project lead for the Mowgli Giginijana Initiative. You're going to be hearing from my colleagues, Elizabeth Burton, policy analyst, and Heather McNeil, our legal advisor. So we are from the Mowgli Giginijana Initiative, which means keeping our children together. And our team works out of the Gwilamuk Mowglusawak and Mi'kmaq Rights Initiative office. We are working to draft a Mi'kmaq customary code and policies to reclaim Mi'kmaq jurisdiction over child welfare from the province. The work we are doing on the Mi'kmaq customary code is an exercise of Aboriginal right and self-governance and does not derogate from the Aboriginal treaty and inherent rights of the Mi'kmaq rights holders. The Mi'kmaq customary code and policies will also remain in draft form until they are ratified and can be changed based on the feedback we receive from our stakeholders. Today we're going to be talking about the general provisions in the customary code and coming into force of the customary code. The general provisions speak to liability, insurance coverage, enforcement of the code, amending the code, annual reporting, and resolutions and regulations to support the code. In terms of liability, there will be insurance coverage for the agency staff, the agency as an organization, and the Mi'kmaq governing authority who are acting in the delivery of services and supports under the customary code and its regulations. This means that if something happens when someone is performing their duties under the customary code or regulations or fails to do something that results in a liability, they can seek protection under the insurance coverage. The insurance coverage does not necessarily offer the same protection in cases where someone acts in bad faith or gross negligence when performing their duties. We are also looking at ways to enforce the Mi'kmaq customary code in accordance with community standards and traditions, including a restorative justice model. Anyone who acts contrary to the customary code may be subject to sanctions that are consistent with Mi'kmaq customs, culture, practices, and values, provided that such sanctions are proportionate to the seriousness of the action. Like any law, the Mi'kmaq customary code needs to evolve over time to meet the needs of the Mi'kmaq children, families, and communities it is intended to serve. There needs to be a periodic review and amendment of the customary code with approval by the Mi'kmaq governing authority and the Mi'kmaq community, the community members. We are proposing that a review of the customary code will first take place two years after the customary code comes into force, then at minimum every four years. Whenever a, whenever a review is completed, a written report would need to be provided to the Mi'kmaq Governing Authority and made publicly available to all Mi'kmaq community members in Nova Scotia to whom the customary code applies, no later than one year after the start of the review. The agency must also prepare an annual report for the Mi'kmaq Governing Authority that provides an overview of their operations, including, amongst other things, a list and description of their services and supports and programs offered, community engagement activities, partnership and collaboration development, financial audit, and reporting progress on their strategic plan. The agency must make their annual report available to the Mi'kmaq Governing Authority and all Mi'kmaq community members within three months of the completion of the report. The Mi'kmaq Governing Authority may make any resolution required to facilitate the operation of the customary code unless it conflicts with any provisions in the customary code and are not in the best interest of a Mi'kmaq child. The Mi'kmaq Governing Authority may also make regulations that they consider necessary to carry out the purposes of the customary code. Regulations set out rules and processes to carry out the intent of the customary code and hold more force than policies. The coming into force of the Mi'kmaq Customary Code will be the official transition between the provincial child welfare system to the Mi'kmaq Child and Family Wellbeing System. When this happens, the Mi'kmaq Governing Authority will assume jurisdiction of the following services for Mi'kmaq children and families, both on and off reserve in Nova Scotia. So they're going to resume intake and after hour services, prevention and early help services, family preservation services, placement services, children in care and transitioning to independent services, applicable adoption services, and other associated administrative services. Once the coming into force happens, the future agency will be responsible for providing the services Heather just mentioned to Mi'kmaq children and families. 
As a result, if another child welfare organization receives a report of a Mi'kmaq child residing in Nova Scotia who needs services, that organization will need to inform the future agency right away so that they can begin to provide services and supports to the Mi'kmaq child and their family. We are currently working directly with the province of Nova Scotia on a process of transferring their cases involving Mi'kmaq children to the jurisdiction of the Mi'kmaq when the customary code comes into force. Transitioning to the new Mi'kmaq system will require training for many people who would work with Mi'kmaq children and families involved in the Mi'kmaq child and family well-being system. This could include social workers, assessors, lawyers, tribunal judges, Mi'kmaq governing authorities, band designates, school personnel, early childhood educators, police, health authorities, and others. The Mi'kmaq will need to develop training modules for these people that is reflective of the Mi'kmaq customary code and policies so that they know how best to support Mi'kmaq children and families. For staff specifically, they'll need training on the customary code and for specific policies they'll be implementing on how to use the MCASE electronic case management system and new assessments or tools that they'll be using. This would be part of onboarding for all staff. We're currently looking at what the training will look like and what training opportunities we can access with other organizations. We've also had discussions about pre-implementing some pieces of the customary code in order to see how it works in practice and make any necessary changes prior to its implementation. We'll need to keep you posted on those discussions. So we can't tell you when the new customary code will come into force. That will be when the Mi'kmaq leadership and Mi'kmaq community members have reviewed the customary code and are ready to move forward with it as their code, as their law. We need to keep in mind that although the customary code and the policies are well advanced, much work continues as we work out the logistics of implementing it. We want nothing more than for everything to be in place for the best possible outcome and success. Thank you so much for tuning into these series of videos on the Mi'kmaq customary code and policies and the work of the MKK initiative. This, conclu this concludes this series we hope you have found uh, them informative and helpful in understanding how the Mi'kmaq are transitioning to a model of self-government and reclaiming jurisdiction over child and family well-being. The customary code and policies will remain in draft until they are ratified. And if any of you have any feedback or comments, please reach out to our team.